Hey guys, welcome to the video. My name is Oliver King and this channel is all about how to make money from your art. And this includes for me things like photography, videography, and a little bit of graphic design as well. Today I'm doing a slightly different video and this is because there's new legislation in Canada as of June 1st, 2019, which requires drone operators to have a license in order to operate their drones. So I just wanted to share some of the resources that I have so that people who want to operate their drone inside Canada can go out, get their license, and then fly and get back to their hobby. So this is a tricky test, but rather than complaining about it or trying to work around it or getting a big fine or anything like that, let's see if we can just piece together a lot of the information that we need in order to pass this test and get back to flying and get back to our hobbies. So this test is potentially quite difficult. Uh, it's actually quite an easy to fail exam. You need 65% to pass it and you get about 90 minutes to write the entire test. It's all multiple choice, so um, no need to worry about long answer questions or anything like that. But a lot of the questions are quite technically worded. There's a lot of difficult uh, language used in some of it and there's a lot of terms you're probably not gonna be very familiar with. This is why it's so important to look at the necessary resources uh, so you can get the right information from the right source that so you can apply it to the test so that you can answer these questions so that you can uh, pass it with flying colors. Now, full disclosure before we get started, I really need to say that I'm not an expert in any way, shape, or form. I'm not going to be able to answer any specific questions about this test realistically because I just don't know that much about it. What I really wanted to do is just give you the bare minimum information about the resources that I used in order to pass it and the study materials that I used. And hopefully what you can do is take this material and apply it and hopefully add on some of your own knowledge and your own expertise so that you can more easily pass the test. If you're looking to get 100% on this test, if you're looking to just gloss through this and know every single thing about flying drones, then this probably isn't the video for you. Instead, this is a video for people who just want to pass the test, just want to pass the basic exam, just get back to flying, just get out there with their DJI Maverick Pro or their Spark like me, and just get back to flying and doing their hobby. So if you want to get a really good mark, this isn't the video for you, but if you're just looking for some basic resources so that you can study, pass the test, and and just get out there flying again, then stick around and we'll go through some of those resources. Just remember, C's get degrees. We don't need 100% here, we just need 65%. If you wanna follow along with anything that I'm doing, I'm gonna put links in the description and they're gonna appear chronologically as the video progresses. Uh, most of it is one link in particular that we're gonna look at, and this is uh, Aviation Canada, so you can look specifically at their material, you can see what I'm talking about, and you can just follow along in the document so that you know what to read, you know what sections are particularly important, and then we'll just go through that and. and work our way through it to the end. Now I don't have resources on every specific thing that you need to know for this test because there's quite honestly a lot of information that you would need to know it to completely ace this test. So I'm just going to give you the resources that I used. These are just the ones that I think are the bare minimum required for you to pass. Hopefully if you have the time you can look into some other resources or you can do your own research but in the meantime hopefully this will uh, add to your own material so that it'll be a little bit easier for you to prepare for the test. All right, so this is the first link that I have, and this is just on the Canadian Aviation Regulations. And so I've specifically linked you to part nine, and so this is going to be just down a little bit here. So you can see this is part nine, or IX, however you wanna look at it, remotely piloted aircraft systems. So this is gonna be the first little piece of the section, and these are just some of the terms that they're gonna go over on the test. And a few of these in particular are going to be on that, so you might wanna review these. So for instance, control and command link these are things that came up on the test so I'm just going to highlight those so you can take a look and then also I'm going to have a look at payload this was mentioned quite a bit visual line of sight and also visual observer these are a few of the things that came up on the test these are a few things that I noticed that uh, came up again and again on different questions we're gonna to go to the next page now and just take a look at a few of the other things here um, Here's a couple things that came up that were a little bit atypical. So um, registration of remotely piloted aircraft. So this is in section 90106. And so this came up, so read over this. This is information that you're probably gonna need for at least one or two of the questions. And then also cancellation of certificate of registration. This one was a bit of a bizarre question because it specifically had to do with the minister in the question. So it's a, it's a test that's pretty persnickety about some of the questions it asks, and it's gonna ask you some pretty specific things. So this was one that came up for me. It was just about the cancellation of certificate of registration. So have a look at that. Uh, 
Uh, other than that, visual line of sight. This comes up pretty frequently on the test, so you're just going to need to know uh, when you can and cannot operate it. And uh, I'm not going to give you any specific information, but I'm just going to point you to these sections so that you can kind of read them over yourself. You can learn them and memorize this information if you want to take it with you. But uh, these are going to be things that are on the test. So visual line of sight, review that. Let's head to the next page now. Um, so controlled or restricted airspace, this is going to come up a couple times. I got, um, I think I got two questions on this and it was about class uh, D uh, restricted airspace or class D airspace. Uh, I had one question on that in particular. So take a look at this, read through this little section here. You'll probably get a couple questions on that. Um, definitely a few on these right of way. I had a question about that. I had a question about fitness of crew members. So know the difference between pilot, crew member, and visual observer. Those are gonna come up on your question. So you have uh, crew members, you have visual observers, you'll see this here. It's gonna ask you a few questions about that and uh, probably just for safety reasons, but it's going to be pretty important. And then, <laughs> yeah, know about living creatures. No pilot shall operate a remotely piloted aircraft that transports or carries on board living creatures. So. Please don't put your dog on the drone. It's not a good idea. It's cruel. It's mean. It's illegal. Don't do it. This should be obvious, but they have to do this because I'm sure somebody out there did that. Um, also make sure that you know a little bit about uh, your pre-flight information, your maximum altitude. I got one question on that. Uh, horizontal distance. I got a question about horizontal distance in regards to a certain type of weather. So they will actually ask you a couple questions about weather and what um, what in particular matters about that. So uh, it was about horizontal visibility and what weather phenomenon um, doesn't allow you to see past one kilometer. And so it does ask you some really odd specific little questions like that that aren't necessarily in this document, but I'll link to a couple of the sources that I used and hopefully that will allow you to kind of parse through it and figure, figure out what's, what, what you need and what you don't need for this test. All right, so we're on the next page now. I'm just gonna keep scrolling down here and just pointing out things that are, are useful. Uh, minimum weather conditions, that's gonna come up. I had one question on icing and um, what else did I have here? Night flight requirements. Uh, I had one question that kind of obliquely mentioned this, so take a look at night flight requirements. Um, multiple remotely piloted aircraft. Uh, this one is definitely one that came up. I had one question on that. Uh, handovers and payloads. So a lot of stuff in this particular section. So review this stuff. Um, make sure you know these sections. These are a couple ones that cropped up in the, in the question section. Uh, ELT, flight termination system, again, these two are important. Uh, they'll probably have a couple of questions on, on the test. And operations in the vicinity of an aerodrome. So the nice thing about most of these questions is that they are going to be similarly worded. So you might be able to do a control F search when you're looking through these documents. It might help you find them a little bit faster when you're searching for particular information. Your records, I had one question on this and it was probably the most challenging question on the test. And the reason for that is that it was, uh, it was one of those multiple choice questions in which it was A and B, A or C, A and D. So you just want to make sure that you know this. Um, it particularly asked me questions in, in regards to uh, this part, a record containing the names of the pilots and other crew members. And then it was also um, just about any modifications that you make to your machine. So um, these were two things that came up on on the test that I took. I imagine that there are gonna be different uh, questions for each test. It's probably gonna cycle through different things, but just to be sure, these are the ones that I was asked and I'm just, again, passing on the resources. Incidents and accidents. I got one question and it didn't actually end up being available in this section. So I think it had to do more with setting down the aircraft when another aircraft was near or something like that. So uh, again, read this section, it might come in handy. Uh, pilot requirements and recency requirements. This one came up strangely often, so I think I had about two or three questions on recency requirements for, for whatever reason. And so, uh, yeah, read over that, make sure that you're aware of it. So when you're taking your exam, these are some of the rules that you might want to follow. Don't cheat. Uh, you're getting help from me, but uh, this is to not be used during your test. So uh, make sure that you are doing it entirely independent and not plagiarizing or cheating or anything like that. 
Um, make sure that you go over a few of these little sections here. Um, I think one or two of these questions cropped up. So um, there was this one that came up particularly, um, so Division 5. Um, 90162 so this was uh, this particular section so just yeah go through this document and in chronological order you should be able to see a few of the different things that you'll be required to know so again I'm just going through this pointing a few different things out but uh, in general read through section 9 of um, Canadian aviation regulations and that will help you sort out what you need to know and it'll just kind of it's a, it's probably the best resource that I used for the entire uh, for the entire thing so yeah if you want to uh, just use one particular source this one was very useful all right so the next link that I have available for you is just VFR phraseology and this is just as far as I know pilot airplane terminology um, so there's just some kind of codes in here that you might be asked about I got asked about one in particular it was to translate a certain code so if uh, for instance the question I was asked I'm going to do a control F search this is a PDF document that I've included the link for so I'm going to go control F it's going to bring up my little keyword search here and the thing that I had to translate was foxtrot foxtrot uh, oops let's spell it right Foxtrot, Foxtrot, and so this was pretty much the exact thing that I had to translate. So you might be able to just do a control F to find the uh, thing that you need to translate on here. So um, I, my question pertained to just orbiting. It's uh, basically if somebody gives you the command Foxtrot, Foxtrot, X-ray, orbit north of Champlain Bridge, uh, turn left turns. So um, this is just a command that somebody might give you if they're in a manned aircraft, if you have your radio on and uh, you're flying your, you just fly your aircraft in circles, I guess. So that is the command that they would give you. So yeah, this is a useful document. This is something that you might have one question on. I just had a single question on this, but since it is obviously um, a test that you want to pass, you just might want to have this resource available to you just to get that one extra little point on the test and just so you don't get another question wrong. So this I found very useful. So uh, there is a link for that in the description if you need it. All right, so this last one, there's a little bit of technical knowledge here and there on the test. And this one in particular was one that I definitely didn't know anything about. And so this is just a link to a physics forum. Uh, if you need to look up any specific details on physics, they had a couple questions about frequency and wavelength. So um, those were interesting questions to just come across on this test. Um, but let's, let's start with this one. Um, pressure center, uh, center of pressure at a stall. So this is one question that I got on the test that was a little bit out of left field. Um, so if you need to answer certain questions, there's some good forums out there that you can look at. Uh, this one in particular, uh, it had to do with center of pressure at a stall. Apparently it moves backwards as a stall occurs. Um, so this is something I had to learn and find out myself. There's a couple other questions that I'm gonna go over in just two seconds here. Um, I'm just gonna put the computer away. So I got asked about a few terms and a few acronyms and I'm just gonna let you know what they are in case you want to look them up yourself before you take the test. Again, this is not a comprehensive look, but these are some things that kind of stood out to me as uh, things that I had never heard about before. And hopefully you can just uh, look these up so that you're at least not in the dark about what the acronyms mean. So uh, NOTAM, VFR and IFR conditions. Frequency, you need to know about frequency in terms of physics uh, as it's defined. So just maybe look that up before you go. Uh, I have the definition here that frequency is the rate at which something occurs or is repeated over a particular period of time. Thank you, Wikipedia. You're going to need to know about METAR. Uh, it's an acronym for meteorological um, or climate or weather phenomena. So it's just basically a type of map that you might be using. Um, so know that as well. You'll likely get a question about VFR phraseology, which was that PDF document where I had the Foxtrot Foxtrot thing that you needed to, to translate. So uh, they'll probably get just that one question on VFR uh, phraseology. Then I got for you just a few little interesting facts that kind of popped up on the test and hopefully this will be useful to you. You might have a few um, questions about these. So for instance, uh, you're, there was a couple things that I learned in which a stall can occur at any airspeed. So I got a question about this. So the answer I believe was a stall can occur at any airspeed. Um, and then the other one I had mentioned already and showed you in that uh, physics forum, which was that cent center pressure moves backwards at a stall. So these are again, very technical, very specific questions. There's a whole bunch of documentation out there about this. If you want to read more about it, I'm sure you can do that. Um, I've read a bit about 
about it. Some of it's interesting, some of it's really technical. So um, yeah, these are just a few of the questions that I got asked about, some of the things that I just wasn't certain about. So I'm just kind of hoping these resources will help you uh, piece together what you need to, to pass that test. Here were a couple questions that were a little bit trickier, a little bit uh, more specific. Again, I had to, to look around to find this information. Um, so what weather phenomenon impairs horizontal visibility to one kilometer? And I'm pretty sure the answer was missed, but uh, you need to fact check me on this because they don't let you see your answers afterwards. So I'm pretty sure the answer to this was mist and not fog. But again, double check me on this. Make sure you don't just input random answers into the test just because I say so. Always, always check, always do your own research. Uh, should you fly a IC drone? Probably not. And uh, what is the most unpredictable weather phenomenon? And I believe the answer to this was turbulence. So they had a couple questions on turbulence and, and what that is. And basically it's just a whole bunch of uh, wind forces acting against each other. They're unpredictable. So I imagine this was part of the question that they wanted you to learn about. So that is all of the information that I currently have on this test. Uh, again, if, if you want to ask me any questions, I'm not gonna be able to answer anything specifically about this test. So what I'm hoping more so to do is to just ask questions in general in the comments section and other people who actually have the answers can respond to you so hopefully what we can do here is just kind of create a, a bit of a information bank so that people can ask and answer questions and so please help out other people who are looking to get their questions answered so that we all have a better understanding of what we need to pass this test and uh, yeah just help me out in the comment section because again my technical expertise is less than zero so um, yeah just just do your best to kind of help other people get that license so that we can all get out there have some fun flying our drone, get some awesome footage, get out some awesome photos, and uh, hopefully we can all just work together to make this an easy process, an easy transition so that we can all get out there flying safely and uh, just obeying the laws so that we don't get massive fines because the fines that they're instigating are pretty severe. So let's just be careful. Let's all pass the test. Let's just pay the 10 bucks, get it done with, and then uh, we'll all be able to just go out there and fly and take pictures and have some fun with this. So again, just read through the information. Section 9 in particular, that's probably one of the most important things that you want to look at. Just look at those guys guidelines, just make sure that you kind of have run through the section a couple times just before you write the test. Just make sure that you're looking at everything carefully and that you're confident before you take the test that you can do this and then just consult the resources as you need them. So all that being said, good luck with your test. Have some fun flying your, your drone if you, if you pass the test and uh, hopefully this information helps. I know this was a bit daunting for me when I went and just looked at all of the information that you needed to know for it. So hopefully this takes off some of the pain for uh, the study part of it and uh, yeah. I hope you get something out of it. I hope you are able to get back to flying real quick. Thanks for watching the video.